Hi, I'm John Branningham. Um, I wrote The Gift of Form and I write about formal poetry a lot and I want to talk about uh, how to write formal poetry, uh, the sonnet. I, and I promise you, by the end of this tape, probably about five minutes, you will be excited about writing, writing sonnets. Most people, when they come to the sonnet form, they get freaked out because a number of things. You got the weight of Shakespeare on top of it and Wordsworth and all the great sonneteers through history and it seems like it's, it's too much, it's overwhelming. Plus, they think that the form is restrictive. They think, well, I've got this idea for a poem, and I'm going to, I'm going to go to the poem, and I'm, it, it's, the, 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 the rhythm of the lines is, and, the, and the rhyme scheme at the end, it's going to make my poem, um, it's going to ruin what I'm trying to say. However, this, and that's what I thought too when I first started writing sonnets, and I went out and looked for a good guide, and there, there really wasn't any. Um, and so, so but what I found as I started writing it is if you let go um, and approach poetry completely differently, um, then the, the sonnet is one of the, the best gifts that you'll ever have. Uh, with a free verse poem, you generally have an idea of what it is you want to say. You say, well, I'm going to write this poem about that time that, you know, I, I broke up with a girl or whatever it is. Whereas with the sonnet, you can't do that. You, you, you have to approach it, you have to allow the form to give you the poem as, and to give you the idea as opposed to you starting off with an idea and come, coming with it. Uh, I've got, and, and the, the, the great thing about it, the absolute wonderful thing about the sonnet is if you screw up, if you totally ruin it, the very worst thing that will happen is that you have a pretty good free verse poem. I mean, there are no stakes here. There's, there's not anything possibly to lose, and there's a lot to gain. Uh, but what, what comes out, if you do it correctly, is whatever's inside of you, whatever's in your subconscious, the, the form pulls it out. Um, I have written up here a famous poem by William Wordsworth, composed on Westminster Bridge, September 1803. Um, I'm not going to read the poem. You can, you can, you can find this online anywhere. It's, it's one of the great poems uh, of the English language. And so I come to this and I think, oh, well, how could I possibly ever write a poem like Wordsworth? You don't want to, right? Wordsworth belonged, belonged to a different age, a different time. Um, he had his ideas. He had his, his problems. He had a whole society that other two. You don't have to do that stuff. You should be writing about what's important to us. So you're not trying to word, write like Wordsworth, but Wordsworth can help us. Why? He's given us the, the, the template here. Um, he's given us, first of all, there's some, you know, you, you have words that, that rhyme and words that, 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 that uh, some words, some words that, that rhyme, they, they don't really go together very well. But he was a master of this. He, he, I'm, I'm just going to steal words worth rhyme, words worth rhymes. And, it's, and it's fantastic, right? He's already given us this thing. And it's not plagiarism, because the only thing I'm going to take here is this thing. In fact, I can base my whole poem on Wordsworth, and this is a great way to get into writing sonnets. Um, he's given us this, this, this poem, this poem um, and the poem form itself draws something out of us. What we also have here is the number of, of, of um, syllables that we have to have and the scansion for the syllables. We don't have to think about scansion. I can put any word anywhere in this poem and it's going to draw something out. So I think of, of, a, of a modern concept, a, a modern thought. Um, what, what's something that, that's from the 21st century? Um, uh, Facebook? Facebook, okay, so, so uh, Jeffrey says Facebook. So he's got the fields, Facebook, the fields, Facebook. Okay, that's got a different sand, scansion. I'm gonna put it here, there, fields and. That's the same as Facebook. I'm just erasing this. Right in the middle, I've got Facebook. And here I've got Sky. For the most part, I'm going to keep these. I'm not going to keep all of them. I'm going to keep whichever ones work. And that's going to be most of them. The only one I'm really thinking about uh, changing at the moment is Majesty. And the reason is it used to be pronounced Majesty to rhyme with by. And now it, it, has, a different, it has a different sound. Uh, so, and anyway, Majesty, you don't have Majesty in a poem anymore. It's a little bit. Week. But that's for later. That, that's, that's later John's problem. Current John, all he has to do is figure out how Sky can go two syllables after Facebook. Um, so, Facebook pictured Sky. Facebook pictured Sky. Now I've got a, uh, something inter interesting going on here. Um, and I've got to figure out what comes either before this or after this. Um, I think probably the word A here, um, open unto, I've got three syllables, she put 
up a Facebook pictured sky. Now I know that what my poem is is narrative, right? Um, am, am I nine syllables? She put up a Facebook pictured sky. That's nine syllables. I'm going to have to come back here and fix this at some point. Or if it turns out really spectacularly well, I'm going to leave it at nine syllables. There's no sonnet police. Who cares, right? It's, it's given me something that's almost a sonnet, but it's still good, right? She put up a Facebook pictured sky, uh, but it's starting a narrative, starting to pull something out of me. Um, on my wall, glittering, and wrote. I left it. I love you. On the half on my wall, and wrote, I love you. Okay, so now I've got to figure out how the the word air. So. The air came out of my... Okay, so now I know this is a poem. It's a love poem. And the sonnet is full, pulling this out of me. In fact, I don't know what I'm going to do here. I don't know what I'm going to say here. I think it has something to do with what's up here. So uh, I'm just going to come up here. Um, uh, I've got the word lie. Lie, in his case, means uh, reclining. I think I used to make, make un, mean untruth. Um, and we used to lie. That doesn't work very well. Uh, except for I need an extra syllable here. We used to lie uh, in bed. Okay, now I've got an extra syllable, so I'll have to find out how to figure out how to do do that later, um, and and so on and so on. And you can you can see how just even starting in the middle, you can start branch out, and the the, the form itself with his things here are are, are bring, bringing these out or bring the poems up. And it's a really great way to start get into the poems. It's really fun too. It's about kind of the same fun that you'd have doing a crossword, um, but also there's that re that emotional release that you go with art as well. Um, and this, this is, is uh, just a tremendously good, good way of approaching it your first time. After a while, you won't need the, 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 the words there. The words are there currently to, to, so that I can kind of gauge where my uh, syllables should be and what, what strength the syllables should be spoken with. Except for here where I screwed up a little bit. That's okay. There's revision. All right? Or it's okay to have 11 lines because it's just, it's just fine. Um, I've got one of my one of my favorite students. Um, just has been working on uh, different forms lately, and he he had he had some big news. So I wanted to because I'm excited because we, we worked on forms together, and he had, he had this big news. I wanted to to bring him in. And his name is Jeffrey Gressley. So Jeffrey. Hi everybody. I'm I guess I'm supposed to tell everybody what my big news is, and I'm very happy to say that I have my first chapbook coming out in September with Silver Birch Press titled Her Blue Dress, and very excited about that and fortunately I was able to use uh, form um, form to my form to its uh, better ability and um, create some villanelles within this chapbook that really do a lot more than what my free verse can do on its own and what I mean by that is uh, the strength of a proposed refrain will bolster the lines of any of any poem more than what just repetition will do in free verse and I think that there is just this garden, this playground that form offers. And uh, once we really accept that and we're able to put ourselves into this playground and be our, be our own writer that we were before form, you get this real strong holistic understanding of what form and words together can do. It's pretty incredible. Well, thank you, Jeffrey, and thank you, Ivan, who is holding the camera. And uh, thank you for looking at our, our blog. Bye.